It all ends with episode 6 of Loki, which just ended minutes ago. Episode 6 is called For All Time Always. This is the culmination of the previous five episodes of Loki, the journey of Loki and Sylvie to the end of time to confront a character known as He Who Remains at the end of this uh, giant Wizard of Oz type of story. The man behind the curtain is revealed and the future of the MCU is changed forever. Now, obviously we're going to go into some spoilers if you have not known that by now that my reviews for these shows have spoilers, they do. Um, but this is a big one, though, because it's the big finale and everything's building to this. So this episode, what are my thoughts? I did think this episode was a bit of a disappointment, if I'm being honest with you. It's very hard to stick the landing when it comes to these shows because they have all this build up, and we as fans always try to think and speculate on what could happen. But after what happened with WandaVision, I've kind of felt like I should lower my expectations and my standards and just kind of wait and see what the story is they're trying to tell me. And with this episode, I was a bit let down. I didn't hate the episode entirely. I think some people out there will. The action in this episode was kept to a minimum. And... The mystery of this episode, you know, they resolved some mystery, but they also opened up a lot of new questions. Now, they did reveal in the mid credit scene that Loki will return for season two, and I wasn't sure if this was a real confirmation, because I had heard rumors about there being a season two, but nothing that was actually concrete. Turns out that is true, that there will be a season two of Loki, and that will continue the story. Because obviously this is not over yet. Now who is he who remains? He who remains is Kang the Conqueror. That's who it is. Jonathan Majors plays he who remains. Who has been cast as Kang the Conqueror. In Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Which is set to come out in 2023. Which will continue the storyline. But Jonathan Majors is indeed Kang the Conqueror. So they did confront a version of Kang the Conqueror who goes into the whole story of how he created the TVA. And it was all because he discovered various different timelines, various different multiverses, and different versions of himself. And what ends up happening is it ends up leading to a big decision that has to be made at the end of this between Loki, Sylvie, and what they're going to do. And whether or not this character of He Who Remains, Kang the Conqueror, is telling the truth, or if he is just, once again, deceiving them. This whole episode had a subtext of deception, it had a subtext of free will, and it had a subtext of kind of the arc of the characters and what they should do. And at the end of the day, it ends up leading to a confrontation between Loki and Sylvie, which I thought was a decent fight scene, but I think a lot of people are going to be expecting... Like a giant, big sort of set piece, like a big finale, like what we saw with Falcon and Winter Soldier. And that's just not what this was. This was done to set up not only season two of Loki, but also to introduce Kang the Conqueror as the villain. And to set up this new time rift now where everything's going out of whack. I like the fact that, first of all, I like the acting. I got to give credit to the acting. Uh, in this episode, I thought Kang the Conqueror, you know, Jonathan Major was a little bit wacky, um, but that's okay because he is kind of mischievous in a way, and I, I had no problem with it, but I really got to give credit to Gugu uh, Mbatha Raw, uh, who played Ravonna Renslayer, like, she was really, really good in this episode, I got to give her credit, she really took the bull by the horns in this episode and really shined as far as her performances go. And she also has a bit of an unresolved storyline, which I'm, I'm assuming is going to continue in the next uh, season. Now, Sylvie makes the choice to send Loki, our Loki, back to the TVA. And when he gets up, well, when he ends up there, he realizes that the other characters don't remember who he is. Almost that like they had their memories wiped. So it looks like 
there has been some more timeline shenanigans going on. And I'm not exactly sure what the explanation is, to be honest with you. Sylvie goes ahead and kills this version of Jonathan Majors. And then we see sort of the timelines split. And it seems to be a bit of a permanent split. Now, it seems like the way they're going based on the teases. Now, I could be wrong. Is it seems like with Kang the Conqueror, with this version of him being killed the version we're going to see in the future that he's warning about, because he basically warned that if they take him out, that they're going to have to worry about a much worse variant of himself, and that he knows that because he's already seen everything. And the variant that they're teasing is probably going to be Immortus, even though I could be wrong on that. Or perhaps this was Immortus. Maybe this was Immortus. Because Immortus has extensive knowledge of, of all of time. And they could be doing a thing where this is Immortus and Immortus will lead into being Kang the Conqueror for the Ant-Man show. Either way, this is going to have to probably be explained, most likely by Doctor Strange in one of the upcoming movies. But Kang the Conqueror is here, folks, and he's going to be a threat, I'm guessing, to the multiverse, and to whatever else is coming. Now, as far as this episode goes, I was happy to see Kang the Conqueror. When I saw Jonathan Majors, I knew it was him as kind of this trickster. And I did like that. I did like his performance, and I liked the conversation he had with the Lokis, even though I think that a lot of people were expecting answers, and they're probably going to be very confused and left scratching their heads. Obviously, I know it's Kang the Conqueror because Jonathan Majors is playing him. And we know where this is going to go. But now the cliffhanger is that Sylvie is there. She is, I guess, in charge, even though she probably isn't really in charge. Mobius does not remember Loki and does not remember anything about who he is. And Loki's just become another variant. So it looks like they're kind of resetting time in a way. How that is going to lead into Spider-Man and into Thor and into Doctor Strange remains to be seen. Exactly what all of this means. But I'm sure Strange will explain it because he's going to be the one to do it. Now, what do I think is going on? I think that what they were trying to tell us is that because they showed like Kang the Conqueror's face in the TVA. I think that whatever version of Kang the Conqueror, whatever variant wound up taking over when Sylvie killed the one that was in charge... That version did a wipe. That version um, basically wiped the timeline. I I guess it's been reset again. And now that Kang is in complete control of the multiverse. And it seems like that Kang won the multiversal war. So now they are faced with a big dilemma because Kang the Conqueror is now the winner. It's not the one that was there. It's a worse variant of that Kang the Conqueror. And that's what they're going to have to deal with going forward in Phase 4. I think that they are implying that everything started over again, but with somebody much worse, with a worse version of Kang, worse than the one they already had there. What could be worse than that? I mean, who knows? But it does really seem like, you know, we have a lot more questions now. And we have a lot more to wonder about going forward. This is going to be a one of the most talked about finales ever. And it wasn't really the end because we have another season to come where the battle with Kang and the TVA will continue. And it looks like Kang's going to end up being probably one of the major overarching villains of Phase 4 now that Sylvie put him in power. So lots of mysteries going forward after this episode. Overall, I can see this being a bit of a disappointment for some It was done to build up more for the future and perhaps not as satisfying as some may say. I'm going to think about it a bit more before I actually write it off. But I do feel like it was a bit of a letdown. Perhaps not as much as WandaVision was, but it was a bit of a letdown. But I want to watch it again and see how I feel about it. I thought it was, I didn't hate it or anything like that, but I can see some people hating it. Whereas I see this as being sort of like, 
a setup for bigger and better things. 